Hi, welcome to Build London. I'm Hannah, um, and I'm here today with the two stars of BBC Drama Informer, uh, Naban Rizwan and Nell Hudson. Everyone? Hey. So, um, if you want to ask a question, uh, you can actually contact us on Twitter. It's at Build Series London with an LDN. Uh, or if you're watching on Facebook, please leave a comment and we'll try and get some questions later on. So, first of all, guys, how are you doing? Great. Good. Warm. Very warm. It's really hot. It's October. What's going on? Kind of I mean, I'm not complaining. Global warming. It's all right. It's all right. Crowds are global warming. Oh, God. It's a nightmare. So can you, um, obviously, this is kind of the big espionage thriller coming up. What can you uh, tell us about it? Cool. So uh, Informer is, uh, centers around um, a young guy from London, um, Raza Shah, uh, who gets kind of coerced um, to work for the police um, after a a night out that didn't go to plan, I think it's fair to say. Yeah. Um, and it just, <laughs> it just follows his, his journey um, in that role. Um, and there's various other plots that weave in and out of the story. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a thriller. Um, it has lots of comedy. Um, it paints London in a really um, vibrant way. Um, it was great. You should watch it tonight. Oh, well, yeah. You, you can watch... Uh, we've got a trailer, actually. Yeah. So here oh, we're I shouldn't have said all that. Paint a picture. Here you go. VT roll. Oh my God. That's so, I've seen the first two episodes and that's still really exciting to watch. Um, so tell me a little bit more about each of your characters. I mean, we've had a bit about Raza, but what about Nell? Uh, no, I play your character name, but that's your name. <laughs> Thank you. My character <laughs> name is Charlotte okay. and she is Raza's love interest girlfriend. There's a picture of me, sure. Um, <laughs> Looking great. That's, you. that's me. That's not my character, that's just me. Yeah, she's Raza's love interest. She's an art student. She's a pretty well-to-do middle-class girl who's trying to rebel and express herself by having pink streaks in her hair, like a true rebel. And uh, through her art... Dreadlock. Exactly. <laughs> get the dreadlock. <laughs> yeah, and I think that she represents part of Raza's life that is fun and carefree and hedonistic. You both kind of come from different backgrounds and all that is how is that ex uh, kind of dynamic explored um in the show i think i think i think they're just two young people from london who just just get along really well and um you know it's the sort of place where everyone's from different places but you know if, if you you click with someone you just do and they're raza is not really an artist um mm. like charlotte um but they obviously meet and yeah, it just goes from there and then just go to a and club. get on. Yeah. <laughs> I think it definitely is more... The, the difference in where they've come from is put into a starker contrast later in the series when Raza has to meet Charlotte's family because I think, you know, we see her in that habitat of, you know, a, like, nice home counties, uh, Queen Anne brick house, and it's all a bit sort of stuffy. That was nice. That, that, it was that a beautiful house. house. Oh, oh my god, the house we shot at. Filmed in a house in Orpington. It was gorgeous. I will not go back. <laughs> really I'm, bad. One of the things I quite liked about it, even though it's kind of a serious subject, there's really great moments of levity. It's really mm -hmm. funny moments, and I think a lot about um, your character. He's probably the one who's kind of making a lot of the jokes, and Paddy Considine, who's obviously great in there. Mm -hmm. You know, is that important when you're doing a show like this, where you actually show that it, it's not as dark there are some you know people are just everyone's just like us you know it's relatable yeah. absolutely i think when i'm watching something i don't like it to be too like gritty and like dreary you know it needs a bit i know that looks a bit they look a bit, they look a bit, they look a bit serious I love it. don't they but no th there's some real humor in the script um and i have i'm really a fan of that it's like uh, that line in the back of the car like that's that's what you look for in a script mm. it's not solely what you look for but you know, it's nice to have those moments to contrast, like, the serious subject matter. I think especially as, you know, when we look about kind of representation on screen and how, you know, people of colour are presented, it must be great to have a show like this where actually it kind of just, like, knocks all these stereotypes out of the park and it really calls them out. I mean, how easy is it? I mean, you're just... This is your first on-screen role, right? How easy has it been to find roles like this? I mean, are they coming more frequently or is it a bit of kind of still getting the old classic kind of terrorist kind of roles or something like that? Um, I, don't, I don't look at them when, like, when they come through. Like, my agent knows like that's, hmm. 
that's by the wayside, you know. Um, but yeah, like I'm just really lucky to be involved in 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 a show where there's uh, a lot of uh, actors of color boss in it, um, in really great roles, and they don't have their characters don't have to justify themselves being there. So if you look at um, the uh, DCI Rose Asante, he's played by Sharon D. Clark, who's amazing. Um, she's like the boss of. She's like the chief, like the head honcho of the police, um, and she's a black woman. Um, but there's no plight of her trying to justify that. She's just there, and we accept that from the beginning because she's really great at her job. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm just fortunate to be involved in a project like this. I'm in really great company. The cast is amazing. It is. It's really amazing, and I think going back to what you said, like obviously I'm a white woman and the scripts that I get sent reflect that a lot and I get sent period dramas and that's what I've been doing for the last five years. So when I saw this, even though my role isn't that big in it, I was so immediately excited by it to be part of something where as a white person, I'm in the minority. It's so much more interesting and so much more reflective of the world that we live in. What do you, I mean, I think a lot of film and TV shows, they say something about the world. You know, what do you hope when people are watching this, audiences at home, what do you hope they take away from it? You know, take away in the community and how we, I suppose we treat each other as well and how we don't judge books by its cover. I guess for me, I, I suppose the best, the best piece of art don't give you answers. They don't tell you how to think. They, they don't tell you how to feel. Um, instead, you, you come away with, the, with a question um, that, that really, you, you devise your own thinking off of that. And I think the questions from Informa are, what is identity? Um, what does that mean? It, are we safe in the way we, we tackle our, our security? Do we feel more or less safe um, in the way we're going about that? Um, outside of that, I just really hope people are engaged um, with, with the show, with the characters, because it's really well written. and. Um, yeah, I just, I just hope they come away with, with connecting with all the characters. You same now? Yeah, I think you put that brilliantly. I think it's, um, like you say, you just want people to be engaged. It's such an entertaining show. Like the humour that we were talking about earlier, like, yes, that's part of what's appealing about the script, but it's also just very natural. Like in life, even in the heaviest moments, I think it's really natural that someone has to make a joke and break that tension and, you know... It's, uh, it's just a really, really entertaining show. You mentioned you have some great um, co-stars. Um, what, I mean, again, first kind of role, you've been doing a lot of theatre work, you know, was it quite daunting going onto a set with, you know, Paddy Considine and all these other people, and all, Nell Hudson as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I, remember, I remember the first day, well, the first day was really the, the read-through. So before the shoot, you kind of got, everyone's got a script and it's around like a huge round table and like BBC are there, Amazon are there. And then you got like, so Paddy was like opposite me at the end of this like really long table and, and Belle as well. And I was just like, Ugh. Um, so that there was- There were so many people there. There was like so 80 many people, people in the room huge, around this huge table. Yeah. And it was like, read this script to everyone. Um, so yeah, it, it was a bit nervy at first, but Everyone was really lovely and super talented, it goes without saying. But, you know, once the first day, you know, when I, when I worked with people, it just, it just put me at ease. Um, now, you said, again, you've done loads of period dramas. Outlander, Call Me Wife. Uh, again, you obviously picked this role because it's kind of modern, contemporary times. I mean, what's the biggest difference? It's quite refreshing not to have to wear period dress, maybe, nice white totally jeans. Is. It's absolutely lovely. I not. want to wear a period dress. <laughs> Get your Do corset. You? Yeah. Who could you, you could play Florence Nightingale or something in a really weird version of that story. Um, yeah, it was lovely not to have to be in a corset purely on a physical level, like you can breathe and eat. But <laughs> also I think as an actor, there's just a tiny bit of a bridge that you have to cross to get to whatever character you're playing. And if that character is from a different time period than you, that bridge is longer, if that metaphor makes sense. And playing someone who exists in the same world as you and has the same cultural references as you is, uh, is just a little bit easier in terms of getting into their skin and being able to second guess what they would think and how they would feel. It's sort of more available to you. How different is this to getting into kind of a role compared to going on the stage compared to doing a TV role for you? What's been the biggest difference? It's really technical. So you might be like really going for something in a scene 
and it's, you think it's going really well, and it's like, cut, um, yeah, your head kind of blocked the other actor, <laughs> and you've got to do that all again. You're just like, oh. um, so the, the, the repetitive nature of it, um, you know, but it's, it's great and it's rewarding as well. Um, so, yeah, just the technical stuff that I had to pick up, you know, it being my first TV role um, as I go along. Um, obviously, it's set in lot, all around London. You know, has it been quite nice? Has it been stuff that you've seen that you might have not visited certain areas? A bit of a tour guide as well. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's set around. I think places we're familiar with. Um, you might spot like Peckham High Street uh, or Brick Lane in the show, but there's also places that have really helped me to rediscover London, like in my own, my own city. Yeah, it's really really well shot as well. So you're shooting on location in this place, but was there a kind of? I mean, you're hanging out a lot. You know, you've got a lot of time in between takes. Any funny business going on? I know a lot of people like to do pranks on set. Were you guys kind of well behaved? <laughs> Are you kind of all good? I just ate all the food. They, <laughs> I've never been fed before like this. It's great. That's the thing about TV versus theatre, isn't it? It's the catering. There's just They feed biscuits. you. They don't oh stop God. feeding biscuits you. All and the time. I just keep <laughs> eating. Um, so Roger Jean Sengayumba, who plays the deer, um, who's Raz's best mate in the show, he had he has some antics, man. I don't know if you if you saw, but he was he was always he would just start rapping on set, but like he's not a good rapper at all. Oh like he just rapped and is like really. I hope cheesy. he's not watching. Ameri oh, he knows this. I've told him several times. Um, but yeah, just like doing like a American South accent. There's like really <laughs> bad rapping. And when you're like, around a bunch of actors, like working through all the different accents. Yeah, Paddy did a lot of voices. What's yeah. um, Paddy was always. What accents can you do? Because there's a lot of accents oh in this. Go on, can you do one? Because I can you do Paddy's accent? Because that's like a proper northern accent, isn't it? Well, he's, he's like from that? Nottingham, isn't he? Is it kind of Nottingham Midlands? Midlands, oh, yeah. Oh, go on, can you tried, do it? No, this is your moment of I'm truth. I'm trying to think of one of his lines. <laughs> oh no, no, let's not. Let's not. That's okay. He's a great actor, <laughs> and I'm not you're gonna. My, what did he say in the trailer? Uh, you're my hunter gatherer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, nailed it. No. Is Paddy here? <laughs> <laughs> Don't kill me. <laughs> so um, this is six, six episodes, but, you know, we want a second season. Are we already thinking about this? Would you love to come back and do it? Or is it kind of a complete series, you know? I think it was written as a standalone um, at first. But, you know... It They're making well. Toy Story 4. They what? Can, yeah, I know. They killed it with th <laughs> 3. Lots of Hug and Bear was way too evil. Yeah. That just took a time. Yeah. <laughs> Toy I'd Story love to two, do another series of this. I mean, I don't know how much uh, more mileage our relationship has left. But... Uh, fingers crossed. It, fingers crossed. <laughs> I'd, love to, I'd love to do another series. It was so great to work on, and the writing is just excellent. It's just some of the best writing I've ever... So, final thing. I mean, obviously, we're in binge-watching culture... Now, it starts tonight um, on BBC One at 9pm. Now, you can watch it every Tuesday, or you can wait and watch it on iPlayer and watch it all at once. What, what should they do? Do what you want. <laughs> Just watch it how you like. If you want to watch it, I hope you do. If you do, I hope you like it. Um, but there's nothing wrong with iPlayer. There's nothing wrong with uh, having it with your dinner, with your family. <laughs> it's all good. I'm easy. <laughs> now, what are you saying? You agree? Concur? Yeah, that was very diplomatic. Well done. Yeah. I, I do quite like the thing of watching it as it comes out every week because then you get excited. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I also enjoy a Sunday full of just one series all in one go. Well, that's all we've um, got time for. Thank you guys so much. Thank, Thank you. You. Um, you guys, as we said, watch an iPlayer, watch tonight, 9 p.m., BBC One. Uh, watch it each week. Don't get spoilers uh, if you wait till <laughs> the end, very end. Um, once again, thank you so much for our lovely guests. <laughs> Um, and thanks for watching. Thanks, guys.